This podcast is brought to you by Steed Motor Group, Clare Galway. For your personalised vehicle shopping experience, find out more at steedmotorgroup.ie. So delighted now to be joined by former Galway footballer Barry Cullinan and Pablo O'Griefa to look ahead to the action in round four of the Galway uh, Senior Football Championship and the final round of the group stages in round three of the Intermediate uh, Championship as well. Um, a huge weekend of action awaits with the side a lot of clubs fate this weekend of where they're going to go. Barry, I presume you're missing the power rankings on a week like this. <laughs> that's it yeah 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 as I said it's um, controversial enough but sure look it's it's a bit of crack at the same time Paddy Rogue I hope you weren't involved in any uh, <laughs> trolling or anything like that when you saw where I had in the branny but look they're flying up the table in the intermediate rankings in fairness to them they're they're powering ahead and, and they look like you know I know Kilconley's still number one but the branny still looked like probably the team to beat at this stage Um and in the senior football, yeah, look, one or two surprises maybe from the start of it. But it'll be interesting to know when, when the quarterfinals are are sorted out in a week or two to go back and look at the, uh, look at the first round, first round of the power rankings and see how many how many of the first eight did we get right, or more importantly, uh, how many how many did we get wrong? But sure, look, that's all that's all part of it, and that's why we get paid the big money. And. Uh... Paddy, just on that, uh, we'll get into senior first, but just on your own club, uh, Michal Brannox first. Um, as Barry said, they really are from so far. Yeah, I think so. Um, they, they seem to be happy enough at home now. I, I, I've no involvement or anything. I, I don't be down as much as I used to, but um, obviously it'd be great mates with a lot of them. But they, they seem to be happy enough at training, how things are going. They're obviously aware of the last few years. They may be, they may be thought that they underachieved or un- underperformed more so. You know, they they weren't getting the best out of themselves because, you know, a few years ago they were only in senior and they were competing in senior, you know. And I know there's a there's a there's a step down and and they they probably were losing lads, etc. But to be to be fair to them, they look happy. They look like they're playing with, with good fluency and all you know so it's 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 hard to know i, I know kilconley are, are are top of the group and number one for a reason and they seem very very strong at the moment but as far as i know the, the brandy you know they're they're very happy at the moment and, and they're going well do you miss it probably not being able to play <laughs> yeah of course um Ara, look it's 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 that thing that you, you can never replace you know you're you're born and raised playing football in Ireland. i suppose it's more football than after a while and it's the void that you can't replace, really, really and truly. You know, you try other things, but, you know, football was number one for me. But uh, you'll always miss it. But I, I kind of I, I kind of um, made my peace with it, too. You know, once I, you know, got to a stage where the injuries were carrying on too much, you know, you had to look after the body, too, and be, be you know, sane about it and, and be realistic about things. So I made my peace with it, but it, it's it's a huge regret also that I didn't go on to play more, you know. Uh, how many times was it you did the uh, cricket? So at the end it was four, but the, the last one was just a partial tear. Like, but you know, I, I probably could have, I can't, could have, you know, come back from it, maybe, perhaps. But I, I kind of just walked away that time. I didn't think I was up for the rehab and the going through the slog. And I think I was advised really that, you know, you know, there's more to life than football, and which was tough to take at the time. But you know, looking back now, maybe in years to come, I'll be happy I did walk away when I did. You know, because there's a lot of damage done there, but it is what it is. Just with that, a lot of players seem to be doing the cruciate. I presume when you nearly do this cruciate, it's to an injury. No player wants it. But like for your own head, I, I'd say when you're going through that at least three or four times, it's, it's just probably a mess. Like it's probably so tough mentally. Ah, of course it is. Like, you know, so many people have done it. But do you know, it, I, when I had done it at the time, you know, over the years, you know, I had great support. The Galway GE were great. Me, my own club were so good to me, you know, so... I had the best of medical background helping me along, but um, it's just wear and tear, you know, the body's not able for it after a while, and the, the more you do it, I suppose, the more it, it's going to kind of reoccur, and it's going to happen more and more often, but uh, it's 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 a dreadful injury, like any injury for any sportsman, but um, I suppose this one is, is very common in this day and age. It probably is getting to the stage now, I suppose, compared to a few years ago, where probably the rehab and everything's getting better for players to come back. You've probably seen players maybe come back a bit quicker than usual. 
yeah, you, you hear of boys who are back within six or seven months, like what's um it, it all depends on the person and how, how they're reacting to different things they could get a little um a little sidetracked or a little bump on the road and they have to you know go off again for another week or two and do something extra you know but everyone reacts different to every injury everybody reacts different to every sort of rehab method or or program that's ahead of them but it's 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 tough either way you know what i mean you have to put in the slog otherwise you know you hear of lads who go out for nine or ten months and then within a month or two they could do the other other knee or other ankle or other hip or other hammer or whatever it is because they're so focused on getting one thing right but there's a lot to it. For sure and, and just to get into the senior championship lads at uh, Group A first you have by Cullen obviously um, have been the dominant team there top of the group and then you have Anna Down, uh, James and Milltown uh, all level on points, and then uh, Lettermore and Spiggle sitting on the bottom, both with uh, zero points there. <clears throat> Barry, safe to say the game of the weekend here really is added on to Midtown uh, Saturday evening uh, at 5.45 in Tune Stadium. Uh, yes, yes, safe to say, and, and Group 1 is, is very competitive. But just, just before you start, we start that, I must say, in terms of Paddy Rogue, like it was a huge, and I'm just saying it because he's looking at me on Zoom, but like he's been a huge loss to go with football. Like I remember seeing him at, at under 21 level and like he was, he was a huge talent and just, just a pity. I think two people stand out to me that their, their careers in go with football have been cut short badly is, um, obviously outside of Michael Meehan, would be Patrick Sweeney and Pat Rogue. I think they were uh, two huge losses to to go with football and would have been would have been super super players but look that's that's life and and such a it, it's a pity but we move on and yeah and a down and a uh, milltown and this group this group in general like is competitive so yeah look we expect my Colin to go and beat that some more at the weekend and, and probably you know they have eight points they'll be top of the table do they put everyone out against Anna Down they might even look at bringing people back someone like Sean Kelly in their last group game so you'd expect them to go and win that so that leaves Anna Down Milltown and St James's battling it out and the, the crazy thing is they, they all play each other or in the last two games you've Anna Down and Milltown this weekend and you've made St James's and Milltown next weekend so it's going to be really really tight Um, I, I think Milltown are going really well and um, I was really impressed with their kind of battling ability against against Mike Cullen when they were under the cash, they were well down. Mike Cullen had the run on them. They just stuck in there and they've lowered the pace. And they're down with a big win over Spiddle. But I don't know if they're going overly well. Um, but I have a funny feeling that the three teams in this group, so Anna Down, so Mike Cullen will top the group. And then I think St. James is... And a down or Milton, one of the two, one of them will end up being the, the top third, if that makes sense. So, in terms of Saturday evening for Anna Down Milton, I think Milton will squeak this one. Um, and and I'm yeah, I, I think I just think Milton will, will, will squeak it and they'll probably squeak that second place in this day in this group. Just on that, um, Barry, we're still seeing a lot of the stalwarts uh, play for Milton, the Blakes and etc. still going. For you, how are they still doing it at this age? Because even against Mike Cullen, they were like the Mertens, the Blakes, like they were producing really impressive performances. Yeah, the, the, the thing is, like when you're, particularly club level, like when you're good, you're good and you know age isn't as important at club level and you, like look at Gerard Farrer what he did during the week 16 points for Castle Gar and, and like, he's definitely 40 I don't know if he's 41 yet I won't he, he, he could be highly insulted if I said he was 41 but like Michael Martin's an excellent footballer and at club level he'll still be an excellent footballer the same as Sean Blake the same with Carl Blake and now they just have a sprinkling and that's what you need in teams like that where maybe they don't have the big, big player base that, that some of the other clubs have. They need to hang on at times and no better team than Milltown just to hang on and wait and wait and wait for a couple of talents to come through and they now have them with Jack Coran and the two Costellos and they'll be waiting for one or two more and as one or two more come, one or two more of the older lads will fall away and and that's just that's just the nature of it. But tradition is, is huge as well in that they, no matter if they had... 15 geriatrics on the pitch. When they put on that blue jersey, Milltown have a tradition that they feel like they're one of the top teams in the county and that's what has them 
kind of consistently there, you know, competitive every year, and and it's a credit to them. Just with that, Padder, obviously Anna Downer coming into this one on the back of uh, impressive enough performance against Ons and it didn't go well for them open today, but they seem to have. There seems to be a small bit of momentum for Anna Down coming into this one. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, they started a bit slow, all right. Uh, I've noticed that, but Alan Glynn seems to have them a bit, you know, or a mo- motor now at the moment. Like, and they seem to be going well. I know they put up six goals against Spiddle. I wouldn't read too much into that, like, you know, and I, I know Spiddle were missing a good few on the day, and just, you know, sometimes they can go in like that. They could have easily not gone in as well. Um, the only thing is, my or Milton put it up to my Cullen for a while there in their in their championship game. Like, you know, there wasn't a huge scoring difference between us. So, like, um, you know, it's a, it's a very tight one to call, but I th- I think myself just a, a prediction. It's it's I I think M- Milton may squeeze this one uh, on the weekend. How do Milton cope with Damien Gomer? Yeah, <laughs> how does anybody cope with him? Ah, like anything, I suppose they have a game plan. You know, you, you probably have to be realistic. You have to have two lads around them, give or take one lad beside him at all times and another fella floating about. It's it's like Clifford in, in Kerry, you know, like the likes of Comer. Like, these lads are going to win the ball. They're going to get points. They're going to get a goal here and there. You just have to, you know, try and keep it to a minimum that, you know, as best possible, keep them to maybe a one point or two points or three points or a one-one at max, you know. And you have to focus on your own game too that, you know, you know that, Damo is that caliber sort of player that he will get something like that in the game, but you just have to focus on your own game. And Milton, Milton will look at Damo for sure. They look at other lads too, but they'll definitely focus on their own lads as, as much as 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 Damian Comer, you know. I think the most just just from that, I think the most important aspect of that, and Padre Rose, you'll probably agree with me. This is more than likely at some stage Damian Comer get a goal on Sunday or Saturday evening. Like you know, he's he's highly likely to do it. Yeah. I think the big focus for Milton is that. They, they when they do that that they don't and it down don't get the next score. You know, the Milton has something in place there, right? He gets a goal. We make sure we retain possession from our kick out. We work it down the pitch yeah. and we try and get a score or two from that. And I think at times what you see happen is is particularly when the good teams and I've seen it I see Mike Cullen do this to teams on a number of occasions where they get a goal, Desi sticks a goal, whatever happens. Then they get a, another then they get a point, then they get a second one and all of a sudden that goal, they're, they're gone from maybe being three up to five up or, you know, two up to f- to five up. And, and all of a sudden, it's kind of game over. So I think the big thing for Milton will be that if, this is for any team, that if, if their marquee player gets a goal, that it doesn't automatically mean that they're going to get the next score. That, ha- that has to be a responsibility from everyone, from keeper to, you know, people can't go hiding, if that, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Sure. And just on that... You both mentioned that you expect Milton to win this, but this this is definitely a game where it seems like it's it's vital here for Anna Down to win really Father, because Mike Cullen to come and then James's could already be on six if Milton were to beat James's, then they go on to six. Like this could really decide whether Anna Down progress into the knockout stages or not. Yeah, definitely. As I said, you know, they, they did start they had a slow start to the year, but um they seem to be motor now, gathering a bit of momentum, and 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 everyone will know Barry will know that you know a bit of confidence after six goals the last day, you, you feel on top of the world, like you know in any game, and they'll they'll feel you know they're well up for this this weekend, and you know and they they're very right as well, like but it's it's all about confidence, building momentum, and you know they'll they'll be aware of what's happening in the group around them, and they'll they'll see this as you know a must win game, they're not going to take it lightly, but. I, as I said, it's only my prediction. It's going to be a tight squeeze either way, but I just go for Milton for one. That's all probably, you know, but Anna Down could be could be the other way around and more, you know. Yeah, like it's it's, it's a toss point, Barry. Just, 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 just on that note, Pedro, you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> <laughs> can't you find the catcher? I, I, you can't avoid the, the Twitter, Twitter at it by going for both. For both right, teams. okay. But, but no, I, I agree with you. Like, in fairness, uh, this is one where you would say a draw. A draw yeah. certainly wouldn't be off the cards, but, um, but you're but on that like I don't think we can spend as much time in every game. But on that, like and a down probably have to win in that yeah. they won't be expected to get anything off 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 Mike Cullen in the last game. Now yeah. the big advantage they'll have is that they, they should still have a big big score difference. But 
that leaves them on four. St. James's, we would imagine, will beat Hotspidget at the weekend. They'll already have six. And if Milltown beat them at the weekend, they'll be on six. So Anna Down would have to go and beat Mike Cullen yeah. to get anything out of the game. So I think you're right, Paul. I think this is a this is a, a one, one of those games that decides your year, really. Yeah. Yeah, it seems really significant. Just on the other two games, obviously, you have there uh, Letra Moore and Mike Cullen in Pierce Stadium um, at 3.45 on uh, Sunday. It's just kind of on Lettermore, Pather, and Spidel as a whole, and um, Raven referencing on the power rankings. Both of them teams, I'd say, are already looking at that final game between them. Um, it's just been a year where both of them have really struggled. Yeah, definitely. I'd, I'd be close to lads on, on, on both squads. I was only speaking with Kieran Barrett there, the Lettermore captain, about a week ago or 10 days ago, and he just said, you know, Look, let's let's more dogged lads. You know they'll fight to the end, no matter what. That's the type of lads they are. They're they have a great character back there. They have a great club, and you know the great heart and all. But after going up against my Cullen, they probably know it's realistic. They probably are looking at the last game, but you know, I you know they'll be focused on it. But I think they've one or two back from America now that we're gone. You know, so um, what's his own Barrett and Oshie McDonough. So you know it adds to their strength. They'll they'll, they'll give it a good go. As for Spiddle, I, I'm aware that uh, Finian O'Leary is back from Australia, which is a huge boost for them, you know, and and fin- and um, what let's say, um, Spiddle best James as last year in the relegation. Like, so they might fancy themselves against James as this weekend. You know, they'll they'll be up first, definitely another another team that are very dogged and will fight to the end and fight for every battle. So I, I wouldn't write I wouldn't write Spiddle totally off this weekend, but uh, it does come back it does come down to the last day for the two for the two teams really. Is is that the struggle with some of the clubs in the Gwent of, of just losing players at the minute? Ah, you know, I, I I suppose it is, and it and it isn't. It's the same for it's the same for other clubs around Galway, and you know, it's 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 a struggle with every club, really. Um, I suppose the the desire for people to go and get out of there because of because of what Australia and America can draw, even in terms of GA, like you know, it's 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 huge these days, but. It is a struggle, I suppose, but it, it doesn't necessarily come down to Connemara clubs. I don't think. I think it's every club are battling these kind of battles every day of the week. But uh, it's just it is it is tough for for Spiddle and Leicestermore at the moment the position they're in, I suppose. Would you expect James and Mike Holland to have too much for either? Uh, well, James is obviously in Spiddle uh, Sunday at two o'clock, and then as I mentioned, Leicestermore and Mike Holland three forty-five on Sunday. That's a double header in Pure Stadium. Would you yeah. expect James James's and. Um, James and Mike Cullen to have too much there, Barry? Well, definitely uh, Mike Cullen. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, you're right. Uh, yeah, Mike Cullen. The big, big thing for Mike Cullen will be: do we see Sean Kelly back? I think that's that's kind of a an interesting one. And the, I expect St James to win, um, but it is one that if you were to look for a shot for the weekend, it wouldn't surprise me that that on speed jail they'll they'll certainly, you know, they they won't be overly fearful. Of St James's, who are showing really good form, they probably don't have that killer forward that's going to absolutely nail you, like a Damien Comer or whatever. So I think I think on Spidgey will fancy a, a rattle at St James's, and it could be a good kind of a uh, maybe a good confidence builder, even if they don't if they don't get a win, but it could be a good confidence builder to get over that and a down one and and build for a right crack and a, a right battle with Lettermore. There were two games uh, in Pierce Stadium uh, on Sunday, as Double Hager has mentioned. On to Group 2, you have three games uh, this weekend. Kerfin, Kastran, uh, Tomb Stadium, Saturday at 4. And then um, on Saturday as well, you have Salty, Nocknacar and Berna at quarter past 4. And that's followed by Uchtered and Kalanen uh, Saturday at 6. The table at the minute stands Kerfin on top at 6 points, Salty in second at 4. Uchtered in third on uh, three points, and then you have Kalshran and Bernard level on two points. Obviously, Kalshran dramatically about Bernard in the last game, and Kalanen's in bottom of the table uh, on one point. It's when you're nearly looking at the table here, Pather, you're nearly thinking it's already about the battle for third spot. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, you know, Corfin are going very well, especially I'd say they took huge confidence from beating Salt Hill, especially last year's finalists and all. But you can never write off Kerfin anyways. 
as for Salt Hill, they're going to in, into a local local uh, derby this weekend, obviously in far better form than Barna. They probably will come out on top of that, yeah. Uh, for the third spot, it's it's up for grabs there, you know. Uttarar, Kalan, and to be huge on this weekend. You know, Paddy Sweeney came off injured, I think, against Salt Hill the last day. Is he going to play today or to, uh, this weekend? Sorry. You know, I put your money, he will be right for it. Like, he's no better man to show up for Kalan and the Sweeney brothers. Um and Kalanen in saying that, I know they're bottom of the group. They put it up to Salt Hill for a good while in their game. I know maybe Salt Hill pulled away at the end or whatever, but, you know, they, they battled hard and against the license, you know, maybe Uttarard, who who aren't on Salt Hill's level at the moment, I don't think, you know, they could they could easily come out and, and win this game also, you know. So it's 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 up, it's 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 a tough one, but, you know, the the local rivalry between Uttarard and Kalanen, you know, goes back so long and, and especially in the county final a few years ago or, or a senior relegation game a few years ago or whatever it was, um, you know, it's going to be a huge day for them. You know, the, the two the two clubs are so massive, they all went to school together and lots of that, you know, so it's it's going to be a big one, that that game. Would there be a hatred there between them? <laughs> is, is, there a, is there a hatred between any club, you know, a rivalry club? I don't know. I wouldn't call it hatred a, uh, a friendly friendly rivalry maybe but no ah sure I suppose you always want to get the better of your rivals no matter what what happens what day you're going to hold against them Just on the first game there Barry Kerfin Kajtran um, Kerfin obviously coming to this game uh, three wins in a row Kajtran um, leaving it late the last day against Berna kind of similar to Dr. Ed Kalanen there's there will be a there's a rivalry here between the clubs Yeah Certainly, but unfortunately, I suppose they're they're Curfin are operating at a different level to Carlos Tran. But you know, Car- I, I saw Carlos Tran against Sultan Nakara, and I thought they they battled really hard and they showed great, you know, resolve for us. They they tackled hard and they played some good football. And I, and you know what? They deserved. I know it was a late goal. I think they deserve two points out of this group so far. Now, like for me, for me. Like if if we're to look down the line this moment, like I think this weekend I think Sotil will beat Barna and I think just about Uthrard will beat Kalana. So to me, the real interesting one then is in the in the last in the last weekend that will put Sotil on six on six points going into the last weekend, Uthrard on five, and you'd be saying, Right, this last game between Sotil and Uthrard is one that you'd be you'd be looking to go and see. And on the flip of that, so you'd have Carlos Strand and Kalanen in the last game. So, mm. you know, they're like, I think, and, and overall, I know we're looking at this weekend's games, and but overall, it's been an absolutely brilliant football championship. And the structure is, is really, really good. You have to give credit to the board on that one. It's competitive. The standard has been excellent. Yeah, look, we know my Cullen and, and, and Mount Belly, my lock, are probably ahead of, of everyone else. But outside of that, like a core of fame, maybe a, a little bit ahead as well. But outside of that, everybody's really competitive. And like, I, I think like it'll go down. I think the week, the last weekend, this weekend will be very interesting. The last weekend is going to be absolutely nail biting. Mm-hmm. For Kalistra and Barry, is it just about staying in this game for as long as possible? Ah, yeah. They're, they're not like Tommy Joyce is around a long time. He, he's not going to have any unrealistic ambitions that no, no, they might who knows but he'll know that this isn't this isn't what Carlos Strand's season is all about you know their their season or the sort of not the carry game isn't what so Carlos Strand's season was, was all about their season was you know Killanen Barna and to a certain extent to the to three games so yeah he'll he'll be competitive he'll be trying to test Corfin he'll come up with various different way, methods of getting under their skin and when they get frustrated, Tommy will have a good old laugh about it. But he'll be he'll certainly be saying, right, we prepare, we we get over this one and we go hell for leather then for our last game. Yeah, with that even with Kervin Padder, they're top of the table, but probably they're probably frustrated because they kind of fell into Uchtdar's tactics really in that third game and scraped over the line. So it's probably one they're targeting here in upper performance. Yeah, definitely, you know, and, and as it, as Barry and yourself have mentioned, uh, the local rivalry, I suppose, is, it's there as well. It's, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll have learned from that as well. That's the way Curfin are. They learn from their game so much. You know, it's one of them clubs that, 
really you, you see that they don't do the same mistakes twice nearly you know they just really focus in on what went wrong and they and they improve for the next day so I do I do see a big improvement in them uh, this weekend to be fair It's probably from some of those forwards that Kevin Johnson probably wants to step up just with obviously Jason Leonard and Ian Brett gone at the minute he, he's probably looking for Dara Silk and, and these players now to step up yeah, definitely. And that all comes with experience, you know, like, you know, these lads are, I know they're not as young anymore, but, you know, they're great ballers, like, and, you know, the more games they play, the better they'll become, like, and anybody around Gary Sice, you know, he'll enhance any lad around him, you know, so it's it's a great mixture of young and old, I suppose, but great experience there. And as I said there, with Kevin Johnson, I, I had him myself in the club a few years ago, 10 years ago or so, whatever. He's a he's a great mind for football. He, he's, you know, he's you know, he's always thinking ahead and thinking of different things. You know, he's not he's not a an old school character at all. Like he's he's really going to develop them and and try and you know bring the best out of them in in so many aspects of the game. Just on the other game, uh, Barry in the group saw Till and Berna. Um, saw Till to have too much he here, really, or like we probably yeah, don't know how Berna are going to come into this one after the last day. Uh, yeah, again, I, I think I think Sartell will have to have too much for Barna if they're to have any realistic ambition of, of going to, to win this championship, which, which I would imagine that their management team, their players have. And again, I suppose a bit like the Sean Kelly thing with Mike Cullen, it's just going to be interesting to see, can, can Sartell get their, their full quota of players back on the pitch? Because we know at the moment they've been riddled with injuries. Um, but yeah, I think you know, there's no point could delve in too much into it, but I think Sartell will have again it's a good local rivalry, but I think Sartell will have too much for them. Um and just, you know, as an aside, like I think the form of Cahill Sweeney has been exceptional. I think like if Paul Joyce is looking at someone to to really have gone and taken a club the club championship by the scruff of the neck and shown that he has the the leadership and the ability to to push on with Galway, I think one player that has stood out so far in here for me is Cahill Sweeney. But just on their injury front there, Barry, how important is it to get Tomo and Garrow Armstrong back into action, really, before the knockout stages? Yeah, very important. You know, it looks like they'll probably end up second in their group if if, if they do, you know. So, like, they're not going to be on the top seeds. Um, so, they're going to have a difficult quarterfinal if, 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 if that's the way it goes. Um Garrod Armstrong, in fairness to him, has been outstanding for Sartell over the last couple of years and kind of transferred back to that wing-back role, powerful runner. So he he gives them a dynamic. So if, if they look, if that's what they do, like if Carl Sweeney one side and Garrod another side, they're you know they're coming at you with strike runners on, on down both flanks. So he's really important. And then the, the big thing Tamo has, in fairness to him, is that ball winning ability. Even for Marks, he's really good at it. If you have him and Rob Finnerty up top. Like you know, he, Tomo can at times be inconsistent, but when he's on form, he's excellent. And like, I think you were, you were probably there, Paul. The battle he had at Owen Curran last year yeah. against Anna Town was was certainly one of the highlights of the championship. And uh, um, you know, I, I, plenty plenty of verbals I would imagine exchange between the two lads, but 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 competitive and. You know, and Curran was excellent, but Rob Tomo still kicked four points in place, so shows you how important he is to them. Just on the final game there, uh, Paddy, you know Uchtered and Kalanen really, really well. Uh, how do you see it going? Ah, uh, you know, I suppose uh, Barry warned me, you know, I need to give an answer, a straight answer and a straight result. I do think Uchtered will win, personally. <laughs> Um, both teams need need to win as well, you know, in, in terms of the, for the next day out. Um, I know that Keen Monaghan and Adam Tierney are going very well for Luke Gerard. With Paddy Sweeney injured, how fit will he be, etc. I think, I just think that Luke Gerard have a bit too much at the moment for Kalana. Are Luke Gerard one of these teams, Paddy, that can be dark horses this year? Possibly, yeah, possibly. They're they're a good unit up there, like, you know, they have a great club behind them, you know, they're well set up and they, they always seem to have very good coaches in the last few years, etc. So, you know, it's it's not as if they're just getting about business and just tipping along. They really, I, I'd say, they have high hopes for themselves, and they and they really aim to get there. So, they could be a dark horse. They're a good team. They're a good team, definitely. Yes, the uh, That's the action in Group B. Then it comes to Group C. How that 
stands at the minute is Montpellier have the bye this weekend. They're on top of five points. They have uh, Michaels in second on three points. Claire Galway in third on two points. And then Toome and Dunmore on a point apiece. Uh, so the games, you have, it's a double header in Toome Stadium on Sunday. Claire Galway, Michaels, Sunday at four. And then Toome and Dunmore uh, Sunday at 5.45. Barry, this is uh, the Clare Galway Michaels game to get things underway. It's it's a huge game in a certain sense. It's Michaels' last game, so they really have to win if they want to get through because three points just it's hard to know will it be enough. And then Clare Galway are only sitting on two points at the minute, so it, but both clubs desperately need to win here. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And and Clare Galway, you know they 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 were poor. They're first game um, and then they, they really improved against Tomb Stars albeit like uh, bad first 20 minutes but came good and and and, and did well and, and went on and deservedly won it but you know again same as that time. Michaels have, have have really taken the, the group you know by the scruff of the neck and they've been competitive you know, they got over done more um you know, weren't great against against Mount Belly. My lock and got their draw, got their draw against Tomb Stars. But the one thing for St. Michael's, they know that if they can get a win here, then that's that's them through, you know, in second place. No one can catch them in the last game. So they'll have that'll be a big big carrot for them. And they'll also know that like if they if they get if they beat Claire Galway, like the reality is well, no guarantee, but Claire Goa should get a result against Dunmore in their last game, and it'll mean that Tomb Stars will need to get a result against Montpellier my lock to try and go and get into another group. So this group is really, really competitive. I don't think the best third is going to come out of this group. Like five, three, and three when you compare it to other groups isn't the highest. You know, there's been a good few draws in this group. So um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. <clears throat> Claire Galway will feel that that up top that they, they might have a little bit more scoring threat than than St Michael's, but St Michael's are battling hard and they're not making it easy for for any team. Yeah, Claire Galway will be very wary. Obviously, Michael's bet them last year in the first mm-hmm. round. But Pader, uh the loss of Tygo Malley now for St Michael's, uh, he won't be available this weekend. How much of a blow is that for them? Yeah, obviously he's a good keeper, very, very vocal and and, and a good shot stopper and all he's is I suppose when you're when you're a mid table in your group at the moment, I'd say you need every every player you can get, you know what I mean? Some clubs can afford to lose one or two here and there, the top clubs, maybe like the likes of Mike Holland and O'Kelly and etc. But Michaels need everyone. Like and I'd say, you know, after after their they put up one one, I think, against Mount Bellew recently, like they'd be very disappointed with that. Like, you know, I, I know Colin Tumman well, the manager. You know, he'd, he'd be awful, you know, upset about that and, you know, to bother him, as, of course, like it would bother any team. But they'll, they'll really be on a mission this weekend to, to really put that right, you know, and, and they're well capable of it. So um, I, I personally think I, I go for a Michael's win in this one, but it, it, it's, it's going to be definitely another tight one. Yeah. How does Barry respond to that? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I was entitled for my to, to to express my opinion. You told me from the start. You're, you're going to be cancelled in Killan, and now you're going to be cancelled in, in <laughs> Um, yeah, like uh, to to be very hard for me now to sit here and argue and say that that um, Kerrgoe are, are red hot favourites for this game. They're not. They're, it's going to be a huge battle, as you said. Saint Michael's had a good good win over them last year. If it comes down to a dog fight and really really tight, you'd have to say. Probably St. Michael's will, will shade that one. I think Claire Gall will want a, a real open running game and they'll want to get Jacqueline going forward, Jason Riley going forward and, and try and get a bit more ball into Mark Rohan. Um, but like it's, it's going to be tight, but um I, I just have to I have to trump for, for Claire Gall on this <laughs> one. Barry, fair that thoughts about Claire Gall backing this up because the yeah. like if if you look now if the if a performance isn't produced this weekend they wouldn't have put back-to-back performances together in this group. They've put back-to-back performance together in a, in a good while, to be fair, and um, and that's one hundred percent. And like twenty minutes into the tomb game, twenty-five minutes, twenty minutes, twenty-three minutes, I think into the tomb game, I was really worried. I think there were seven points to one down. 
They weren't going that well. Toom had Toom were causing the problems. Carl McWalter was giving Jack Lynn plenty of it at 11. The Darren Hennessy popped up with a goal and then he got a second one. And Claire Galway kind of powered the way back into it. And Jack got, got to grips of everything at the back. And Jason Riley started causing Toom problems. And in reality, they ran out the, the deserved winners. But but like, that's the big one now. Can they go? And that's the challenge. And if I was sitting in a Claire Galway dressing room as a, as a coach or manager, what I'd be saying to them is, like, you you got to do it. you got to go and back it up. And there's not a lot. Anyone else can do bar bar the players and make sure that they they go and express themselves and they, and they they show high energy levels, high work rate. They have pace, I would say, in terms of pace. They're probably a little bit more than St Michael's, so that's the sort of game that they want to go and exploit and and go and develop. Then with Michael's, obviously, Pat, we talked about the loss of Tiger Malley. I'm not sure what the story with Avon Brannigan is this weekend either. Will he be available or not? But there's there's younger players here in the Michael side now coming through, the likes of Gary Higgins and Colonel Gallagher. These players are standing out for them. Yeah, definitely. Now I wouldn't I wouldn't be overly familiar with Michael's side, but I remember actually I, I met Colin Tommen only not too long ago and and we were having breakfast there in a, in in a, in town and we were saying I I saw a picture of the Michaels team after some game on Twitter or something and I was saying, Geez, I don't recognise any of the lads and you said me, yeah, it's a young group, like you know, but they were gelling well at the time and you know, it's like like any club; they have to bleed new lads through. But these lads are stepping up to the plate. You know, obviously the the Mount Bellew game will be a, a a big loss to them and a big kind of dent in in their you know side going forward. But you know they, they'll, as Barry mentioned earlier on, it's their last game of the group. You know they need to power on. You know they need to really show that they they want to be you know get through this group and to, to show that they're well capable of getting through the group. So it's it's going to be a huge test now, but. The young lads seem to be, you know, they're impressing me so far, Michaels. You know, it's a, it's a good club there, but you know, like like Barry said, you need to back it up now and, and go for go for broke this weekend. The final game then the senior championship, Shum Dunmore. Um, whoever loses this is out of the championship, so it's probably the the most game in the championship that is most at stake, and there's probably already people thinking of the Shum Dunmore old battles um, that they used to have between the two clubs and. There, there's going to be a bit of bite and a bit of niggle to this at the weekend, Paddy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's you know, like any uh, local rivalry, it's it's always a huge one. Um, Michael or sorry, Dunmore just just been you know up to senior again. They're getting a the taste of things. You know, they did okay the last day out. Um, but you know, my my opinion is, I suppose that the experience of Shum will come through, and I I do expect Shum to come out on top of this one. They'll probably feel that they're a touch unlucky in 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 a few games, especially the Clergawi game. Maybe they, would, as Barry mentioned, they're seven one up. You know, you, I know it's probably early on in the game; it's twenty minutes gone, fifteen minutes gone. But when you're that far up, you know, you have to close out games or you have to do something tactical. You know, you have to slow it down if you see a goal going in. You have to get the next possession or something. Two goals going in in a row is a real blow. Like so, but they'll they'll learn from that and they'll know that you know it's a huge one at stake, not even just on the pitch, but. For, for pride and all that too in, in, in the local rivals, you know. Yeah, as Pat mentioned there, Barry, there's a huge amount at stake uh this weekend. Uh yeah, huge, huge amount at stake. Um Claire Galway, or sorry, Tum Tum against Claire Galway, they like they're really impressive. That that's the, the killer for them. They were so impressive in that first 20, 25 minutes. Like as I said, Cormac was flying Gary O'Donnell doing really well at the back for them. Jamie Murphy and and like and I said this on the radio, like Jamie Murphy is a guy that you know lots of footballers are very good when you're going well. Jamie Murphy is very good when you're going badly, and that's a real sign of a top quality footballer. Mm-hmm. And like they had a really good league, and then they they tanked Claire Galway a couple of times, and um. I don't know, just couldn't get to grips around the middle of the pitch. They couldn't cope with Jason Riley coming from, from deep and, and they just struggled and you know, then they would have been expecting and their management would have been expecting and, and Ben O'Connell Ben O'Connell is a big loss them up top as well. Uh, you know, I think he played against St. Michael's, he didn't play against Claire Galway, so it'll be interesting to see see what is he okay this weekend, but they'll be expected to get over done more uh, do more deserve massive credit. 
for their draw against Montpellier my lock they, they parked the bus fair play to them like you can't hold that against them and Montpellier my lock were just frustrated but I think as you said pride would probably dictate that they they won't do the same against Tune. they'll want to go and play football and express themselves and it might just allow Tune a little bit more space up top where where they can um where they can do damage. But I think Tune with some good young players coming through as well. Young Heena and the wing backs a fine footballer. So uh I think Tune will get get a result in this one and it makes it makes that last weekend uh very, very interesting. Is this an opportunity though of Barry now for Dumont? Yeah, every game's an opportunity. Um and and it's an opportunity for them to to, to to test themselves because like you know they they get a win and they get a win in this one and then Tune will have to go and beat Montpellier my lock um in the last game to avoid that relegation battle so that's you know that's a that's a big incentive for them as well it takes them out of that relegation zone uh if they get best and they have to go and beat Claire Galway you know so it's, there's loads of little scenarios that it gives them an opportunity but most importantly, they'll they'll go and they'll enjoy this. And as you said about local rivalries, like this doesn't come any any greater. And these lads will have all gone to school together. Their fathers will have all gone to school together. Their grandfathers will have all gone to school together. So two and two more are steeped in in a in a rivalry, and so they'll be no different. I'd say. Just to touch then briefly, lads, on the intermediate before we um, finish up. So. Basically, in the intermediate this weekend, you have first versus second. So whoever wins that goes straight into quarterfinals. Second goes into a prelim, and then third, fourth, battle it out for who goes into the remaining preliminary quarterfinal spots and who goes in uh, to relegation. Just just coming to your first uh, pattern on Group A. So how oh, you have it at the minute is you have Brendan and Glen Maddy level on four, and then you have Caro and Williamstown on zero. Brendan's played Glenamadi and Cahar played Williamstown. How do you see that going in Group A Padder this weekend? Yeah, obviously um Caro just coming down from senior after after such a long stint up there, like you know, they were the kings of of senior and 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 Connemara there for a long time. I think they were 25 plus years up there, you know. So coming down to the media, obviously new ball game, it, it wasn't easy for them, you know. Um two losses, they'll be very hurt by that, like, and especially Colin O'Donnell or Colin O'Donnell there, I think he's after turning his cruise shit last week. He'd be a stalwart at number six, number five for them, you know, for 10 years, even 11 years, you know. But I reckon, I reckon Carroll will beat Williamstown this weekend. You know, they're, they're just, I think they've, that they've too much at the moment. Williamstown not getting anything against them. They were a strong team for a long time, but I don't think they were as strong this year as they used to be. Um, Brendan's a Glenn and Maddy. I, I think I put Glenn and Maddy at number one for, for, um, up there with Hill Conley for for being the best team in intermediate at the moment. They seem very strong, very well set up. I think it's a, you know, I reckon they'll come out on top against Brendan's. Not putting anything against Brendan's, but I think I think Glenamati should beat Brendan's. I'm not saying by much now, and I think Caro should come out on top against Will Tom, uh, Williamson. Sorry. Then just on Group B, Barry uh, Bonavé and Calcher level on four points each, and then Kerfin's second team play Clifton. They're both on zero, so whoever wins between Kerfin and Clifton goes into prelim, and whoever loses goes into relegation. How do you see that unfolded this weekend? Uh, yeah, it, it's a again, it's a really good opportunity for the Calchers, the likes of Calcher to pit them, pit themselves up against one of the Abbey, who've been going really, really well, and it'll tell a lot. And like all of these teams will want to direct route into, they don't want preliminary quarterfinals because they're just a, a complete banana skin. They want to sit back get into a quarter final, particularly someone like Munave Abbey or even you know Calter as well, because you've the, the lads playing with a Haskell Fohan and stuff. But they'll want to give their players as much of a break as possible. They'll be able to go to all the preliminary quarterfinals and have a full run into to what to be really competitive quarterfinals. Uh, you know, I expect Curfin I mean, Curfin Intermediates have actually been a little bit disappointing because they were in the county semi final last year and just never really got going. Mm-hmm. Um so they'll be disappointed with that. And even in like terms of the leagues, there were two leagues above Caltra. Um so or two divisions above Caltra. So they'll be disappointed. I would imagine they'll 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 account for Clifton and I would say that Munave Abbey will will get over Caltra, but just about and it'll be uh it'll be a good game of football if it's nothing else. Just then on Group C, uh, you have 
you have Brannox and Kilcomley uh, level on four points each, and then you have Cork and Shamrocks and Clister and Clonbarren, uh, similar to all the other groups here. Uh, Adam, I'm going to ask you to predict this, but I presume you're not going against your own club, anyways. Uh, <laughs> against... I I thought you'd leave this one to Barry, you know, to be honest. But... <laughs> Uh, no, um, you know, I, from from reports at home, I think the me and Ralph are going well. They're happy, you know. Things seem to be a bit different this year compared to other years. I, I'm not saying there's huge changes. It's just small little tweaks. There's a few different boys on board. Um, as I said at the start of the show, I think they, I think you know, as a club, we we feel ourselves we underperform a lot. You know, a big one for us the last day was getting two back to back. You know, back to back win in a row, like as Barry mentioned with. Uh, Claire Galway, like, or whatever, like, I, I couldn't think of the last time we got two championship wins in a row, you know, be it an intermediate or senior 10 years ago, you know, it was always difficult to, to get that consistency. So they'll be happy enough with that, but obviously the huge test now, Kilconnelly, uh, Kil I've them ranked up with Glenn and Maddie from the start, they're a good team, very strong. Um, I do personally think Kilconnelly are the better team, but um, I, I suppose I have to say that too, you know, to blow them up convert to my own <laughs> no I, I I think Kilconley are strong you know Mia Ranoff you know they're 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 solid this year they seem to be better but I just think Kilconley are, are a bit stronger but I'm I'm gonna go with my own club anyways but it, it's gonna be a good game now very good battle uh in terms of um Caltra or you know not Caltra Corthoon and um Kilcurn Clumburn you know I suppose Corthoon you know is, is hard for them without uh, one of the Varleys there Paul Varley you know, I, 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 I don't know who's going to come out on top of that. They, they, they seem to be rather on the on the decline at the moment. You know, it's it's just tough for them. They're going through a bad patch. Uh, Kilkenny and Burn the same. You know, without the likes of Sheeny, it, it's hard for clubs like that. You need all your players at all times. You know, it's it's no different to any other club. You just need every single lad you have available. Um, to cut to call a winner on that one, it's tough. I'll I'll probably go to uh, Cartoon. Then just Group D, Barry to finish, um, or more Mary and Ian uh level of four points each to play each other uh, this weekend. And then you have St. Gabriel's and Killer as well. Um, and they're both on zero points each. So similar to every other group there, whoever wins goes between Gabriel's, Killer Aaron goes into prelim and whoever loses uh, enters the relegation. Yeah, there'll be very, very little to separate or more Mary and, and Ilan Aaron now. Ilan Aaron unlucky, I've said this a few times, like Colm O'Brien on, I think is in is he in Australia, Padrog, so yeah, or America. Yeah, yeah. So, so he's a big, big loss to them. But you know, they're still they, then on the flip side of that they get Sean McCurns back. So, you know, they've Stephen Joyce there, he loved them well drilled, well coached. I think just or more Mary, they have a I think they've a they've, they've a Fairly good score difference, Orma Mary, and they put up more scores than Iron Iron. So I think just on the base of that, nothing else. Um, so this isn't uh, scientific by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just going to go in on Iron in that one. And I think, like, Killer Air and St. Gabriel's pff, a toss for coin, but but I, I think Killer Air might just come out on top in that one and and uh, and and put themselves into a, a preliminary quarter final place because, like, you know, Galway football needs the likes of Killer Aaron being competitive. And yeah, they're in, in the doldrums at the minute, not as strong, obviously, as they used to have been, but they, they just need to, to hang on, hang on, hang on, and, and try and get a couple of players through and, and, and push back up to, to where they rightly belong. Yeah, so they're all the games, the Intermediate Championship, uh, eight games in total, a lot to be decided of who. I guess it's not going to stages, who goes straight through to the quarters and who enters. Uh, the relegation playoffs where no one wants to be and then um, loads of games as well in the senior championship a lot to be decided there over the weekend as well but that's all we have time for on our podcast for today uh, thanks a million to the lads for jumping on